Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Infinite Cup Podcast. I am your host, Robert Breton. This is the one and only Dr. Robert Morse. I am really excited to have Dr. Robert Morse on the show. I've been following his teachings for many years now. He has inspired me in many ways. I'm so excited to have him on the show. We talked about all things detoxification, of course. We learned about what it means to live a spiritual life and how to enter that higher consciousness, what is really going on with this coronavirus, how to heal and cleanse yourself from the cellular level. We talked about nutrition and understanding all things spirituality. So I am so excited to present Dr. Robert Morris first. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for supporting the show. Shout out to all the Patreon members. Shout out to everybody in the Inner Circle group. I appreciate your donations. If you want to support this show, check out patreon.com slash the infinite cup. And without any further ado, let's just get right into it. Here is Dr. Robert Morse. Now I just wanted to, yeah, you know, spread the love and the positivity and the beautiful message, you know, about the lymphatic system and everything that all comes with detox and then dig a little bit deeper into spiritual and make the connection for people and you know shine this bright light that we need to shine right now more than ever right uh, big time, big time. Well, you know, it depends your journey and uh, everyone's course on a different level in their journeys yeah. uh, but there is a whole lot of uh, beings I just use that word I guess but uh, individual uh, states of consciousness if you will that are ready to uh, 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 wake up and move beyond this realm uh, in terms of their cycles. You know, yes. call it reincarnation, call it whatever you want, but cycles, you know, your your life keeps going on. But what people don't realize is that they're creating all these themselves. You know, you create <laughs> everything yourself for your own journey. They just don't realize that the only one on the journey is you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautifully put. Well put. Yeah, for me, just to give you a little background, it wasn't until, you know, I started detoxing and understanding the fruit and getting this temple pure to where I can, you know, get that energy from. And, you know, I don't think a lot of people have made that connection, you know, with the food that they're eating and the energy energy output that they're experiencing they should because uh that's the whole point you know man talks about energy all the time lack of a lack of you know chronic fatigue syndromes and all these things and at the same time he's cooking the crap out of food that that's already dead or, or dormant you know like beans and grains that's dormant food and then you're cooking the crap out of them and then you cook anything that's alive so man's wanting energy but he's you know in, in nutrition uh physics isn't considered it's just chemistry and then to a chemist uh i would say most chemists have extreme constipation because yeah. they, they just don't get chemistry properly for some reason. I, I had a chemist in here, and he could have swore he was red as a beet burning up inside of his body, and he swore, could have swore he had alkalosis. And I just, I said, you're nuts, man. You're a chemist, and you work for this big company. You're a chemist, and you think you're an alkalosis? So we argued for, I, he kept following me because he was getting results. His skin was clearing up, but he was consuming alkaline chemistry. He was consuming electrolyte, right, right? Fruits, berries, melons, and vegetables, right? Yeah. Well, that was ionizing. That was hydrating him. He should have known all this as a chemist, right? Hydrating yeah. him and cleaning him up. So one day he came in just sweating like crazy, right? It was pouring off of him. So I had pH papers. I said, you know, give me a sweat, right? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't believe it. it. It didn't even change the paper. He was so acidic. And he, he rambled for the longest time. He finally realized his concepts and theories were wrong. Good. That's a beautiful story. And that's, it's so amazing right now to see that happen. You know, the Western medical system slowly catching up. Things oh, are just God. coming full circle. I bet for you, it's just amazing because you started for, you know, so long ago. And now you've oh. seen this rush of information and you, you know, we've all seen the diets and the fads and the people, the, the waves that come and go and the different titles and the, the marketing. Oh, I mean, you God. name it. I mean, today I still get, you know, questions every day, like where you get your protein from, 
you know, how are you doing this? Why are you vegan? I mean, you name it, there is a very thick, uh, you know, level of conditioning out there. And that's, you know, why I feel called to, you know, do what I do because there's so much uh, misinformation and negativity around just nutrition and health. There's a ton of it. And it's yeah. amazing to me because you've got misinformation from the American Dietetics Association, but when you examine them, they don't even know what they're talking about. They don't know chemistry. They don't know anything. They're totally a consumer and uh, business-generated uh, uh, company and my, and uh, or corporation, of course. Uh, and, and so you see that all the time. And this protein myth is such a big one. But it is probably the most dangerous one because it is the number one uh, uh form of chemistry that man's that man's dying from is proteins uh the corona is a good example these are proteins man interacts with viruses every day he's walking on the earth some are just a little more uh reactive because you haven't developed the herd immunity or things like that but uh you know this whole understand or lack of understanding like you were saying this this ignorance is evolved around what nature does to you when when you ingest certain chemistry what does chemi what does the effect of each side of chemistry have on you and then how does nature deal with uh inflammation or how does nature deal with with the side of chemistry you're developing in your body that's the wrong side of chemistry exactly yes and it's, it's and so, amazing yeah, the confusion is with detoxification. When you look at the corona or any other friggin' viral or any other cold and flu, I've said this, what is another name for detoxification? Mm -hmm. Cold and flu. Yeah. I mean, that's all detoxification. When you consume foreign chemistry, your body doesn't want, or, or you come into an alkaline issue like cold weather, you're going to trip yourself into a cold and flu-like symptom, especially yeah. if you're a milk drinker. Yep. You're just going to happen. And if you don't get get with that, I mean, this, the old country people kind of taught this years ago. So mm -hmm. all this smacks in the face of what man has been developed. These are city slickers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's there was so a couple of old people at, at Home Depot and I was getting some light bulbs and they were standing around trying to decide what light bulbs. And I said, would you scoot over? I need to get some light bulbs. She <laughs> said, oh, you got to stay away from six foot. And I said, oh, go, you know, I said, you guys grow up a little bit. And I looked at him. I said, city slickers, right? <laughs> it's just amazing i have so much compassion for those people you know living in fear right now there is you know that's, that's so uh you know my heart goes out to everybody that is experiencing that because they're creating their own karma and their own deathbed within that situation uh -huh. it is all self-created it is all self-created i know a nurse that every time she gets uh, a feeling of, of detoxification or a feeling of a cold or flu she takes a steroid or an antibiotic, right? Yeah. So she's never had a cold and flu. And I said, you know, you're the one that that is a walking danger. Because if you never allow your body from a little baby on to have fevers and to detoxify, you're going to have some serious troubles. And now, because of the kidney issues in terms of weaknesses, you're going to see the tumors and, 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 and what they call the cancers all over the place. And you, and you are. Yeah, it's true. It's true. That's a, you know, the, the great work you've done with the lymphatic system and everything that explains the detox and how people are not connecting those dots. I mean, that's really the biggest thing. I, for me, you know, right now it's simple, but, you know, looking back when I first got into this, you know, many years ago, it was not a simple concept to understand. So can you just give a few tips for people that are just coming on board to this that have no clue what the lymphatic system is? Tip. Get yeah. out of the consciousness or the concepts of treatment. If yeah. you can lose the concept of treatment and realize that you create everything you're experiencing, maybe unconsciously, of course, but you are creating everything by what you put in your mouth, what you think, what you feel. These are all vibrational issues, but they're also chains to consciousness. So if you live in thought, you live in emotions, you're chaining your awareness down. So this is a part of the problem. So treatment-based thinking is what even herbology got its roots in treatment-based thinking. And this is all concepts are wrong because in that concept, the, the understanding of causative factors, what's causing this problem is lost yeah. because you're fixated on effects. And when chemistry, and this is where you get some of these crazy, wacky theories in chemistry, because if you've ever picked up a chemistry book, a good chemistry book in the very forward will tell you, welcome to the world of theories. 
<laughs> exactly. It is. It's a, you've yeah. got theories out the yin-yang when you're in chemistry. So when you're touting actualities and it's really a theory, that makes me, that upsets me. Because then people start taking these things on as actuality. Just like you said, the myths, the propagandas, all this crap that's out there. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Thank you for saying that word theory, because that's what we're all using our belief system off. And that's when you understand if you're, you have your reality based off somebody else's theory, then it's going to be true. If you believe that there's some virus out there that's going to get you, it'll get you. <laughs> yeah, I know. it. I mean, I hate to say it in that way, you know, because proteins are out there and stuff. But yeah. this understanding of treatment. Uh, you can't treat symptoms yes. because that's where, again, all the lack of understanding of chemistry, your foods and all this comes into play there. And I don't think that's why I, on our YouTube, we try to keep it so simple. And for years, you know, I've taught out of body traveling and spirituality for years heavily. Yeah. And I, 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 I had I've been a nature path for 50 years and I've, I've been a chemist for 50 years, but I didn't always do it because people didn't understand it. You talk about now hard. Back in the early 70s, you couldn't even find books on raw food, let alone talk to somebody. Hey, you know, let's talk about eating raw food. What? Are you nuts? You know, and it's like if you didn't have a meat in a meal, you didn't have a meal. I mean, you know what I'm saying? This is the consciousness. Yes, I know. That's I can only imagine from, you know, like when you started where it began, because oh. like I said, I'm still getting it. Even this morning, I was talking to somebody about it and they're, you know, they just went vegan and their family has always given them crap for it and asking them if they're going to sure. get protein. And like I said, the programming is just thick and without your work yeah. and other, you know, it's just amazing seeing how we are implementing the mainstream and you see how far this has come. It's just incredible to see and uh, people are finding to starting to connect the dots. Yeah, I think some of the misinformation one of them is that humans are not paleos or islanders. So I think uh, the other thing is that when you look into uh, uh, species and, and the relationship of species, the primates are about 96% exactly, not similar, exactly DNA the same. So you're only looking at 4% difference when you look at the difference between a human and let's say a chimpanzee. Not, I mean, form-wise, right? Yeah. When you look yeah. at the consciousness, you also see that movement of consciousness there. Yeah. So uh, people just have to understand that there are so, so much, so, so many myths and things that are designed to entrap you and lock you into the patent place or the days of our lives. Yeah. And if you want free from that, you have to get away from propaganda. Well, how do you do that? And there's only one place that propaganda exists. That's in your mind. Yes. You've got to step outside of your mind for once instead of living in your mind. We live in thoughts and every your thoughts are totally conditioned. Your church can condition them, your your synagogue, maybe your guru can condition your thoughts. Oh, yeah. You want to have your you want to be able to be awake and watch your thoughts, not travel with them. Exactly. Thank you. And you, I mean, I would call that meditation. You hit the nail on the head. And that's why I'm so excited about everything that I do because I started, you know, with yoga and everything and merging the two with meditation and the raw foods, the lifestyle. That is to me the best, uh, you know, combination because in the beginning of my journey, it was very physical. And then I realized I was reaching a point where I couldn't continue any further. And you have to go beyond the mind. You know, like you're saying, these limitations and the conditioning and the structure is real and the programming we got from our families you know our parents and who they want us to be all of this stuff you have to really confront that and ask yourself what are you creating in this life and what are you here to do well it's it's, it's, it's you know when we talk about duality it's funny because everywhere we look we see twos right we see two sides of chemistry two sides of physics uh, actually two sides of, of the one because yeah. when you get into the one it has creation within it you can't have anything outside of totality that's obvious you can't have anything outside of omnipresence and omnipotent and omniscient you can't have anything outside of that so everything's within so within you have the duality of awareness but then the, the movement of thought and duality so the illusion that that thought and duality creates form and then you have all of that yes that's just for consciousness to experience so you've got metaphysics and you have all these uh, lower level uh um uh, states that that you can use to kind of walk up a ladder and play the game but in reality you know it's like i was heavy into soul travel out of body travels right and then one day this whisper this voice was whispering through my being this it said so who's the traveler and i'm going <laughs> exactly 
Whoa, 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 hell, I was wanting to see beautiful jeweled cities and and yeah. travel to these temples and all these learning centers and all the God worlds. And yeah, yeah, but I'm after me, the traveler in the first place. I'm, I'm, it's like that, uh, oh, what is a circle of iron? You know, you, you travel, you fight, you win, you, you go and you have all these seven stages and you op open up the book of life and all it is is a mirror. You. Exactly. <laughs> I've had the same exact experience, the same exact experience. And then coming back here to earth, you know, we have to share this knowledge and share these gifts and otherwise it's useless. You know, otherwise we're just doing that for our own pleasure. And that's not what we're here about. We have to spread the truth, spread the light. Absolutely. And that's what's happening now more than ever. And it's funny because as time goes on, I feel like, you know, they layer on more programming, more marketing, more things, Absolutely. you know, as we, turn to the light and the love and the consciousness increases there is even more you know spiritual warfare is what i call it because it's happening on all fronts you know the air we breathe the soil is depleted you know my first job was picking peaches and plums when i was 14. everything oh. i did you know back then i went you know was organic everything was just how it was and now you know it's become a complete marketing system i had to get a job at the grocery store to understand how it all works after a few years there circling back and now just doing you know strictly coaching and meditation because that's really where i feel people need to connect those dots to experience their true selves yeah oh absolutely you yes. know i was thinking you know when i look into the eyes of a dog or an eyes of a horse or i look at your eyes or i look at any eyes or i look at the eyes in plants what do i see the same thing i see the oneness of all things that's a Jolly and Rumi, you know, how he developed the whirling dervishes, you know, the, the the Rumi effect, I call it, was so in love with life that every atom he saw was God. He was in the now. And everything was so one that he was whirling, you know, in the streets and created the whirling dervish, the Sufi God absorption syndrome. You know, and that that's exactly what you're looking for, God absorption, which means you have to let go of everything. You can't care about nothing. Go to the go go to the Buddha and the Christ and look at what some of the teachings were. The middle path is the detached path. What does that mean? No thought. No yeah. desire, no thought. What does that mean? That means you can't be involved in thinking because thinking is creation. You can let your mind think. But you have to develop, and that to me is meditation, to developing your ability to be in the now and watch thoughts come to you and don't allow it or allow it. Do not be your mind. Pull your awareness back home again. Because the mind can't do anything without your light, your switch, which is your awareness, turning it on. Beautiful. That's That couldn't be uh, better said. Oh my gosh. I, I So many light bulbs go off when you say that. And just for people listening and watching, you know, for me, I had to, again, clean this temple before I could experience that. And the key word here is experience. I read about it in books. I watched people. I know videos, but I didn't experience that in my meditation practice until I had a clean temple. I mean, it's just that simple. I get so many messages from people that want to, you know, continue drinking alcohol, continue drinking or, you know, whatever the toxicity thing, whatever that is in their life they they want to have that and experience this higher consciousness and it's just it's just not possible so that's what I really want people to understand is you have to start with the prerequisites you have to do the work the inner work that we're all doing to achieve that level of consciousness it doesn't just come off like a switch <laughs> well now listen if you think about this and I'll say think about it if you observe this yeah. the only thing that keeps you really from understanding and I got a little, another little one for you. You have never left home. You've never left consciousness. You, you, you're only here through the mind, through the emotions, and through the physical form. You're, you're not, you can't be here at all. That's why you have to have form to express in these lower levels of vibration. So if you're already conscious, what's keeping you from that awareness? Thoughts, emotions, desires, all the things that keeps your attention within the worlds of matter, energy, space, and time. You know, all those things like that. So the, 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 the simple secret is quit thinking. The J, J. Yeah. Krishnamurti effect. Just look at the now. Become the observer instead of the thinker. Yes. You know? Exactly. Because yeah. uh, you have to give up thought one of these days anyway. Yeah. You know? True. And anybody can see it in your mind. <laughs> it's true if you don't think someone's going to think for you right you know how many different people are on this planet now that are not from this planet yeah oh, yeah we got oh, yeah. a lot of visitors now brother and people okay. just got to wake up i keep telling them on my youtube channel get yeah. strong get powerful get self 
yes. because you've got some visitors. Oh, yeah. Big yeah. time. The I know. Can... I've been here a long time. I did a radio show with the Native American. Oh, this has been 20 years ago. And uh, but we were talking to the guy out in Mount Washington, and they were there all the time. And he had pictures, a, a website. He wrote books about them. Yeah. Deepak Chopra was up there. I mean, pretty wild stuff going on. Oh, yeah. It's all out there now with the Internet, with everything that we have access to. It's all out there. There's nothing to hide from. Nothing to hide from. And you said something earlier about the earth and things like that. And that's the thing. If you truly want to know or have God awareness, then you've got to realize this is a rock spinning through space that doesn't really exist. It does exist when you're putting your attention into these lower realms, but when you pull yourself back out of this, the illusion of duality, these things no longer exist in your world. It's just like uh, all, all your world is just nothing but little boxes of, of images, kind of like a film. So if yeah. you don't choose to open a, a, a past image, it's going to stay past. It's like going in past life regression. Make sure you want to go back and open up some dark rooms. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because you are where you are right now, and that's what people have to realize. You can't. You can't this and it's an old saying I've had for years: the seeker of God never finds God. Beautiful. The True. seeker of God never finds God because if you're seeking God, you'll never find it. Because who are you? <laughs> exactly. It's all exactly. within. God trying to it's find all... itself. <laughs> 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 that's the great mystery that's the great illusion that we all get stuck in or or someone keeping it from you right and saying that this way is the only way and this way doesn't work you know that's really what's happening exactly and you can't condition consciousness you no. can condition the mind but you yeah. can't condition consciousness so that when you look at the buddhas and you look at all these things the detachment and all this, simply means you're pulling back living in the present moment which is a moment of observation and so the more you live in that every moment is new because there's no mind there's no thought there's no memory so you have to be careful because it's difficult to live in the now totally and that if you go down the same road to your house make sure you know where you're going but when you live in the now there's no memory that road yeah. you've been traveling to your house every day is a new road that day because you've never been down it you're not in your mind <laughs> yes you know the same it thing happened when i was on a uh, an orange fast for about six months i started cleaning all the mucus out of my head and sinuses and i started smelling for the first time and i started smelling pine trees and i said my god i've been smelling by memory Mm hmm. 100%. I had a very similar experience. I, I spent two years on a, on a citrus farm and going through many fasts. And that, that's what I go through. That, that's what I talk about with the energy because the energy goes up and you have to, you know, you're experiencing this higher energy and the higher chakras and you start to observe some things and you start to connect the dots and the puzzle pieces come together. And it's amazing how many things are just a projection of our past or our, our karma rather than us experiencing the true reality or the true consciousness yeah i mean there's only one person creating your future i mean that's the problem most people don't realize they're driving their own car but in an unconscious manner so they're bumping with all these other states of consciousness with them so they're pulling them into their karmatic aura as well instead yeah. of learning how to ride with but not join with you know yeah. in other words you know how soul experiences creation is becoming that which it wants to experience so if you want to experience somebody's beauty you become them but you lose yourself in that becoming Yes. See, and that's that's like a good actor. You know, if the if the movie's good and the director's really good, you're sitting there watching the movie. You forget you're sitting there watching a movie, and mm -hmm. then when you wake up, you go, "Oh my God, that was really good," because you were moving around to the movie, and that's the point. That's all creation in is the divine movie. You know, it has to do something. <laughs> that's so right it's so beautiful to see so many people waking up to this truth now i'm sure you've experienced it you know more than anybody people uh, coming to your channel coming to your teachings yeah. talking about the herbs making the connection with nature instead of man that's what i tell people it's like are you going to trust something that man made and, and his laws or are you going to trust nature and this thing you are literally the five l you are made up of nature you are not man <laughs> so who who are you going to trust that's what i don't get is that even the medical community has ostracized itself so much from nature that it was a cuss word for a lot of years and when we were recommending vitamins and minerals they were cussing us out and telling us we were pseudoscience and now they're recommending vitamins and minerals and i'm not <laughs> you know and that sort of thing but yeah. i'll tell you for your listeners the biggest deal they can hear is the lymphatic system and the kidneys from that concern because 
when the SARS virus, and I put this up on my YouTube, but when the SARS virus was out, that was really devastating. We have a huge, uh, a lot of people died from that because of their toxicity levels, right? Yeah. So they did a study. The International Society of Immunologists did a study, and they found that 98, that's 98, that's only 2% left, 98% of the people that died had tubular de deterioration in the kidneys. Well, now they're starting to look at that in terms of the corona and finding similar things. So what what I did was bring out the kidney, because this is what happened to me back in out-of-body traveling, brought up the kidney. I learned that kidneys were the eliminative organs of that. So in bringing that out, now you realize when your kidneys are not eliminating or filtering, you're in friggin' trouble because that big breeds all that metabolic acids up, brings acidosis up. Proteins are acidic, so you have everything in, in the acid bill is agglomeration. That is a cationic environment, so it's an agglomeration environment, a dehydrated environment. Nobody's going anywhere, and it'll choke you to death. So they don't know how to hydrate properly. They don't know they don't know any of those things, how to bring electrical chemistry in. You would think you would because they do IVs. I've, I've spent a lot of years in hospitals working, and I can just tell you, they don't have a clue how to save someone, these advanced cases, and we can save them all day long. Yeah, it's simple. It's very simple when you start connecting the dots. And for a lot of the people that are listening, if this is new to you, you know, you have to have the willpower and the trust to try something new. You know, that's the thing. I just want to make that point because I feel like people think, you know, chemotherapy is the only option or rate, you know, things and that are coming from a chemical base, whether it's the pills that you're taking treatments, they think that it's the only option. And I just want to let you know that it's not the only option. And in fact, there are much greater options if you just open your mind to it. And if you open your willpower to just letting that truth in well i think it's important that your people learn the difference but the, of the two sides of chemistry yeah. and the fact that chemotherapy is around two ph or less which is puts it in the realm of hydrochloric acid the whole idea is if you have a cell that's been damaged then you want to go after that cell or the cells around there and try to kill them the yeah. problem is that thinking is antiquated and kills the patient because whatever you do to one cell, you're doing to the whole body. And, of course, they use acids to destroy, which is the problem in the first place. People are already acidic. So it just creates extreme acidosis, sucks the calcium out, and then takes you on the road to death. And it's ridiculous because you want to ask yourself, what's damaging a cell? Well, there's only two sides of chemistry. And metabolic wastes are on the acid side. But I think the biggest issue is, is to understand how simple the human body body is you have cells which everything is made of cells your nose your ears your hearts your livers your your prostates your your toes your nails your hairs all cells right yeah. so you have cells the spaces around them and the two fluids that occupy the spaces that, and a little bit of chemistry but basically that's what your body's made of whether it's a heart or a liver we're talking about it's a bunch of cells spaces and two fluids the vitalness of understanding this is understanding you have two fluids. One is on one side of chemistry, one's on the other side of chemistry. And those two can't come together too much without compromising your life. And when they do, we call those tumors. And that lymphatic system is your sewer system. Your main, you don't have hardly any immunity in your blood. Most of your immunity is in the lymphatic system. They just don't know what the lymphatic system is. And that is a sewer system. That's your car's exhaust system. Try not exhausting your fuel out of your car. Yep. Your combusted acids, uh, uh, it'll destroy your motor. And it's just what all these acids are destroying our motors. You know, and it's just that simple. Get them out, get your hydrated, the body will rebuild. And if you're in a wheelchair, get up and walk again. We do that every day. Yep, beautiful, beautiful. And I just want to tell you, uh, you know, without your teachings, I'm just really thankful. And, um, you know, my fiance just had our first born child. And it's something that going through, you know, the pregnancy stage as well, because that's where, you know, taking our own power back and doing it at home and bringing that into without any, you know, Western systems and just the beauty of that and the connection and the chemistry. I just can't even compare it because, you know, my sister's had kids. I've been in the hospital setting. I know what to compare it to. And it's just night and day. And I feel like that, you know, just childbirth alone, just having a good start, you know, without like no circumcision, no <laughs> blood work, no anything, like no trauma. I mean, something is that simple, you know, to give. I think they used to have a method called the Laboye or something like that, the Laboye, where they were in a hot tub with a nice warm water and uh, the skin temperature, no shock, lower lights, music, 
welcome to the planet you know start talking to that soul instead of talking to the baby because it's not a ba you're only talking about little little bodies but the yeah. soul behind that and to your point earlier the problem is that some more advanced souls are coming and therefore the negative forces are kicking it up and you yeah. can see it because a lot of you guys are highly advanced souls you don't need much to turn your turn that awareness awake you know, and you just have to realize thought is what changes you. Your desires is what binds you to the object of your desires. Let go. Don't care anymore. And you'll actually care more. Yep. You know, the less you care, and it's like the less you have personal love, the more divine love sets in. And then when divine comes in, there, there, there's, there's, there's no space or time with divine love. You, yep. you, you can't destroy divine love, you know. But we're, too, we're isolating things too much. Yeah. And we have to let that go, you know. Yeah. So what I, it's what I call the cosmic view. We got to step outside of our little self, get inside that cosmic view where you can understand yeah. everything. And I just want to show you that's my mantra. I don't know if you can read this. Oh yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Let go, surrender, repeat. That's it. Perfect. That's it. Let go, surrender, Surrend repeat. That's a sticker I have to remind me. Yeah. It's something that I just, you know, exactly what you said. Every time where I thought I knew what love was or I knew where I was in a healing crisis or, or whatever was going on in my life, all I had to do was let go and surrender to that deeper love, that divine love, the unconditional love, and let that consume me and all will be fine. So for anybody that's listening or watching, you know, if you're in that place, just remember once you let go and, and accept and receive, that's really where you're going to experience the light. Exactly. You know, if you realize that your attention, wherever you put it, is the light switch that turns on whatever you're looking at. So your energy, your power is, is what is turning on your experiences. If you don't like them, then get out of the mind and start observing and let that hand of God come in and straighten up your life and turn it all around and it'll clean it out. You'll burn your karma off and pretty soon you'll be pulling yourself away from duality, which is all of creation. No more karma and reincarnation at any level, you know, but if you're trying to achieve awareness, good luck. You'll never get it because it's always elusive because you're always trying to achieve. You're trying to use the mind to find itself and the mind can't understand itself. Uh-uh. -uh. So the only way is you got to let go of, of thought and desire. And once you do, and you're just now the observer, it gets beautiful. Well, well put. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I don't want to take too much of your time. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to be Welcome. here. I'm going to send as many people as I possibly can over to your uh, YouTube channel, over to your amazing course. I do that anyway. So that's all I talk about. <laughs> I love you, man. I love you too. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you so much for everything that you do. I appreciate you. And I hope people yeah. wake up to this truth and we all, you know, come together again in this big, well, beautiful we'll world. Them. We'll help them, won't we? Oh, yeah. We're here. We're yeah, here we'll to anytime. That's all we're here to do. <laughs> that's, it, that's it, man. We're connected. We'll help them. I mean, you know, I'm here to help the, the souls get awake and that's what we're doing. Exactly. Awesome. Hell yeah. Thank all right, you. I love you, bro. Love you. Bye-bye. Have now. a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.